The Capitals season came to an end tonight as they fall in game number four and they get swept by the New York Rangers. What is next for this team? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked on Capitals. Your Locked on Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holney. I've covered the Capitals for three seasons for Locked On. I'm also the host of the Washington Capitals Minute Cast, available wherever you find your podcasts you can find me on twitter it's at dan caps 218 you can find the show on twitter it's at locked on caps and the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to locked on capitals on youtube and comment anything down below i would love to talk capitals hockey with you one-on-one and we can do that on subtext just check the show description for more details today's episode is brought to you by monopoly go i admit it i have a competitive side and it's being a big fan of monopoly go the mobile hit twist on classic monopoly so join your friends and download monopoly go now free on the app store or on google play so in this edition of locked on capitals we talk about how the capitals get swept in game number four. Uh, This was a game that I did think we would see a substantial pushback from the Capitals. And I'm here to tell you that was not real evident out on the ice. And now the Capitals have to talk about what is going to happen next on this team, what players are going to be coming back, that kind of thing. And ultimately, How did the Capitals get in this position? We'll talk about that a little bit later. We will talk about how, even though the Capitals didn't play that well in this series, we did see some of the youth step up, and that is a promising sign for years to come. And then we'll talk about with the season over, now what? What is next for the Capitals? But just to get it going here, like I talked about, I was hopeful uh, that we would see some pushback, as it turns out, there was not a whole lot of pushback. I think the Capitals looked better with Rasmus Sandin in the lineup. I think that the Capitals looked better with Jensen, even though he coughed up that puck to start the game, that I thought the Capitals looked better in certain regards. They were still playing, you know, largely undisciplined hockey, and uh, they were penalized quite a bit, those kind of things, and ultimately is what put them in the position that they were in. And then when the Rangers took the lead, well, they just went into the one three one and played a game of keep away. And that was all she wrote for the Capitals for this season. Uh, disappointing, uh, of course, is my thoughts on this game and the playoffs, of course. Uh, but it's on to the next one. The Rangers are the better team and they will be moving on to round number two. It all started off on the wrong foot with the Caps. Nick Jensen gave away the puck to uh, Capo Caco and he made the Caps play by giving the Rangers a one to nothing lead. And if you are an every day of the show, you know, I talk about that the Capitals always play better when they're playing uh, from the lead instead of trying to play from a deficit where they're trying to fight their way back in the game. Uh, And that was evident in the game tonight as well. And, you know, the the tough thing about this series uh, is it does appear and it was the fact that when the Capitals would score a goal, the Rangers always had an answer shortly thereafter. The Capitals were never really able to capitalize on any momentum from a goal scored. It was all a feeling of like, well, the Capitals scored. Who is going to score on the Rangers and how quickly will that come? And that was the case pretty much for the duration of this entire series. The Capitals again played an undisciplined game in a game that should have been laser focused on winning. 
I think there were certain standout players uh, that really kind of rose to the challenge. I'm going to go ahead and say Tom Wilson was one of those players. I give him A plus marks as doing absolutely doing whatever he had to do to at least try uh, to, to be productive. Uh, he wasn't always successful finding the back of the net, those kind of things. But I think that he gave his level best to try to help the Capitals win as best they can. Uh, some of the calls didn't go the Capitals way. Uh, you know, I've talked about that in the show, like when Nick Jensen was penalized for tripping Fox on what looked to be embellishment. And, you know, I've talked about that quite a bit on the show about calls going this way or that way. But ultimately, I think a lot of these calls, uh, you know, why I think that they were messed up. I ultimately don't think that they affected the outcome of the game in total. It may have allowed a goal here or there, but I don't think the Capitals would have walked away from this series had all the calls gone in their direction. The undisciplined hockey came into focus when Vincent Trocek scored on the power play. This game was a must-win game for the Capitals, but it seems as though the team didn't get the memo. Again, that is what we were hoping for. We were hoping for pushback. I'll talk about Alex Ovechkin a little bit later, uh, but it just did not seem like they were fully engaged. And uh, it almost seems like they already kind of had their plans on what they were going to be working on and, and, you know, what kind of play they were going to be partaking in once the season was over. Uh, and then you take a look at um, Wilson. Wilson let his temper flare and was penalized after going after Fox, again, the undisciplined play that was evident out on the ice. And it wasn't just that, it was the special teams that was atrocious in this entire series. After the Capitals went 0 for 6 in the last game on the PP, they went 0 for 2 tonight. It, it, was, it was a tough series, Capitals fans. There's no two ways about it. And the question is now, what is next? Well, what is next is the capital season is over. I will have you guys covered as far as breakdown day is concerned. And those kind of things is generally sometimes we find out about some injuries that Capitals players were playing with. But in this game, the final nail in the coffin. And when I knew that this game was over is that when TJ Oshie was penalized for high sticking. And then isn't it quite interesting that Artemi Panarin scored and ultimately ended the Caps' hopes of staging a comeback. Uh, I think that we see there that Artemi Panarin got in the last laugh on the whole TJ Oshie situation, um, and it's just interesting that it was Panarin that was the one that happened to score the goal. But again, undisciplined play. Um, you know, I think there was some embellishment that was going on out there, but I think that that probably is a two-way street out there. It was just, it wasn't the way I wanted it to end. I really did think that the Capitals were going to find a way to win this game. I thought they would. I didn't think towards the end here that they were going to win the series. Of course, I had hopes uh, before the series started that the Capitals would have made it a series. I mean, I think if you are a fan and cover a team, that is your hope. Uh, I don't think you're going to say, hey, my team is going to totally bite it and get swept. Um, so I, I am disappointed. I guess I'm not Overly surprised. I know that the Rangers are good. I know that the Capitals kind of backed into victory by making it into the playoffs in the first place. And that is why we are in the, posi uh, the position, excuse me, that we're in. But Alex Ovechkin, he was the tough guy. He was the guy, I think, that let the Capitals down the most. And it's interesting if you take a look at Alex Ovechkin and his season started off with his slowest season goal scoring wise in his entire career. Then after the All-Star break, went on fire, uh, ended up scoring a bunch of goals, ended the season with 31 goals, and then was just a, a nothing burger for the entire playoff series. Uh, that is what is one of the things that cost the Capitals the most. In my opinion, even the ESPN commentator said that he was just hanging around the blue line when his teammates were in front of the net trying to score a goal. Like, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand what was going on with Alex Ovechkin and even Spencer Carberry limited his numbers, even though historically he has been clutch in the playoffs. This was the first time he was held pointless in a playoff series in his 15 appearances. So on paper, it would appear that he is the guy to have out there, but he was just absolutely missing from this entire series. And I know that there are a lot of staunch, you know, Capitals fans that are going to say, you know, he can do no wrong. I'm, I don't care if he's the captain or not of this team. He failed this team. 
Alex Ovechkin failed this team when they needed him the most. I am going to talk about what he did in upcoming episodes. Again, slow start came on strong towards the end, but he failed this team when they needed him the most. Now, there are certain things that could change my opinion, and there is more news coming in, but what he's saying thus far is that he is actually healthy. Um, taking a look here, Ovechkin said he was healthy throughout the series against the Rangers. Uh, that is the word that's coming in. That was from Sammy Silber. And then other news coming in here is Dylan Strom said TJ Oshie played game four tonight with a broken hand. So definitely those are the kind of things that can affect the outcome. Uh, you know, if TJ Oshie was in fact playing with a broken hand, I'm guessing that's going to limit his play. But Alex Ovechkin said he was healthy throughout the series against the Rangers. So what gives? What was wrong with Alex Ovechkin? Before you take a look at him and say, I am going to stand by him no matter what he does, let's get real here. What was wrong with Alex Ovechkin? Just taking a look at it for face value, say you kind of, you know, were viewing this situation as not a Capitals fan and you saw the star of your team be absolutely uh, with zero impact on this entire series. I think it would, you know, there would be a lot of questions. And I, I think that, you know, it's going to be something that we're going to question for years to come. That how is it that the great eight, this guy that, you know, is going to be talked about, you know, forever is one of the best to ever do it. You know, number two right now, all time in goals, totally let this team down when they needed him the most. Um, I'm not going to say it's squarely on his shoulders. We do know that, you know, Alex Ovechkin does his best work when he's on the power play and they didn't do their best work at setting him up. You know, I'm going to be as completely candid as I can here with you. I'm not going to bash Alex Ovechkin. I'm just calling it as I see it. And uh, the other players that were kind of non-existent, I was hoping for more from TJ Oshie. He has a long history uh, of doing great things in the playoffs and just an overall great player that I think you're starting to see a lot of things come into focus. And I'll talk about this a little bit later, but in this series um, that, you know, the age was creeping in and uh, the Rangers were markedly quicker, even though the Capitals did have some younger players. And ultimately that was the case. The Rangers just have, much better systems, even though that is Peter Laviolette and he was the head coach. I'm guessing they're tweaked maybe a little bit with his assistants and the players, the personnel, the net minding. It was just better. Uh, and, you know, if you want to talk, I'll talk about this here briefly is that the Rangers went through a rebuild. I don't know. What was it? Four or five years ago. Time flies here where I remember the Rangers struggled and they kind of they kind of rebuilt the team rather quickly. I think that was like a season, a season and a half that they weren't that great. And look at where they're at now. So I think that is what the Capitals are up against. Uh, but it's, it was evident in this series that we need to see improvement. And again, I'll talk about that in the later segment here. But the Capitals, it's over. The season is over. And uh, ultimately, to, to wrap it up here, I wish the Rangers nothing but the best. I mean that in all sincerity. They're the better team. That's how it is. You can't argue about things. You know, I can, you know, you know, split hairs about calls here and calls there. But those calls would have not changed the overall impact. Uh, say this series was tied. Maybe that would be the case. But the Capitals got swept in this series. And that is something they have to own, uh, that it was just quite a deplorable display uh, in the postseason. But ultimately, what a lot of people expected. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about how some of the veterans... Uh, let this team down, but uh, some of the youth, they really stepped up and showed some promise and I think kind of earned their spot in the future on this team. Who am I talking about? I'll discuss next. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. And, uh, you know, let's be honest here. Sometimes you're watching a game. Maybe it's a Capitals game. Maybe it's a Nationals game, and you're not that into it. Open up the FanDuel app, put a little bit of money on the game. All of a sudden, the game is that much more exciting. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Game Time is an authorized ticket market marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on Game Time app actually go down closer. It gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets and also Nationals tickets. Yes, the tickets are sometimes cheaper close to first pitch. So say, you know, you were busy with your day and you didn't have time to get the, the tickets to see the Nationals. Well, good news for you is oftentimes the tickets are cheaper closer to first pitch. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets and NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N. NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So in the first segment, I talked about where the Capitals struggled, and it was primarily with a lot of the veterans on this team. I talked about Alex Ovechkin. I talked about TJ Oshie, you know, John Carlson. He was big on this team. But a lot of the youth in this last game in particular really stepped up uh, in particular. Uh, and I'm going to say that, you know, Hendricks LaPierre and Martin Faravar are two of the players of promise on this team that I think are one of the things that I'm going to take away from this season with promise. You know, that despite what happened this season, there are some building blocks on this team. I would say Martin Faravari, Hendricks Lop here, uh, Rasmus Sandin, you know, Connor McMichael, a lot of the younger talent, Beck Malenstein, um, were promising at points, some more than others, some was more sustainable than others, and some was kind of, you know, up and down seasons. But uh, in particular, let's just talk about the game tonight uh, that, you know, Hendrick Slop here scoring a goal and just a highlight real goal on the big stage in a key moment is something that I will remember for a long time. One of the things I will remember about this season uh, or this series rather in the playoffs is that great goal in a clutch moment. Ultimately, it wasn't enough to take the Capitals over the top, but it was promising. And I think, you know, you take a look at it. It's talking about the future that is the point that we're at in the season. The young guys in the team showed it some promise and outworked the old Caps players on the team with Faravari and Lapierre scoring goals. Lapierre's goal was a true fist pumping moment. Uh, this was a game that was frustrating to, for me as a Capitals fan, as someone that does a podcast on the Capitals. But when Hendricks Lapierre scored that stunning goal, kind of a breakaway goal from like the right circle is where he shot it from. I was pumping my fist. I was screaming, yes. And I wanted to believe for a moment that that would get the Capitals back in the game. But in any event, it, it didn't. Uh, but the Capitals, uh, you know, the building blocks are there. Uh, the Capitals had just scored, excuse me, the Fords had just scored one goal, five on five all series uh, until Hendricks Lapierre's goal. So that's quite a stat. The Capitals just had one forward score a goal five on five all series until Hendrick's uh, goal in this game tonight kind of tells the story of why the Capitals struggled, how they had a hard time scoring goals. Um, and it, it's interesting that it took it all the way till the final moment for, uh, you know, a forward to score a goal five on five. That is quite something. Um, but, you know, that is what I'm talking about is the building blocks for this team. Uh, and yet you also saw Martin Faravari score that goal. So there is promise with this young players that are on this team. I also think, like I mentioned, Rasmus Sandin, he figures in to be a part of the long term plans. I think that it's unfortunate uh, that we did not have, see Rasmus or Jensen, I guess, really, uh, in the, this series against the Rangers until the final game. Uh, do I think that either one of those players would have changed the you know overall outcome of this playoff series? Probably not, but I think that the Capitals would have fared better. Uh, but that's the promising thing I'm going to take away from this series is the youth, and the youth is what we're going to need going 
forward for next year. Um, and it, there's a lot of questions that will be answered in the off season. I'll talk about that in the next segment, but there is young talent uh, down in Hershey and Clay Stevenson and Hunter Shepard. And, you know, depending on what the Hershey bears do here in the playoffs, which one of those players is due for a promotion and ultimately, what is the state of the Capitals going to be next fall? I do think it is going to look markedly different. And no doubt, a lot of these young players that uh, were huge uh, in the playoffs, I know that, you know, you take a look at it huge, Dan. What are you talking about? The Capitals didn't even win a game. There was some young talent that I think, you know, really impressed. And it's one thing to, you know, impress during the regular season, but when you can do it, when all eyes are focused on you, a game of utmost importance, that that is something for me that I won't forget. I won't forget how great Hendricks Lapierre was in this game when there was a ton of pressure on him. Uh, same goes for Martin Faravari and a lot of the other young players on this team that really played quite admirably under, you know, really tough situations. And I think that, you know, no doubt uh, the, what they did in the Calder Cup last season formed the players that they are right now. Uh, but let's talk about that, you know, in future podcasts as well is the building blocks that despite the Capitals getting swept, which is horrible, you never want to see that. Let's glean, let's vacuum, let's suction some of the positivity out of this. Let's extrapolate the most data that we can that there is is some young talent that is going to be on this team that's promising going forward. They found a way to step up on the big stage and let's integrate more of those players or, you know, give Hendricks Lop here a bigger role as this Capitals team is facing some truly tough decisions this summer. I think that Brian McClellan is going to have his work cut out for him as I think this Capitals team I'm hoping is going to look markedly different in the fall. All right. So coming up here straight ahead, we will ask that tough question. Now what? The Capitals got eliminated in the first round. They did not win a single game. What needs to change? Obviously, something does. Let's talk about it straight ahead. All right, game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. F uh, flag on the play. You already talked about that, but there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for timed tournaments. When you work together to build up each other's boards, the more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's so much to get. Unique stickers you can trade with your friends to complete albums for big prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with with hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique uh, mini games like digging for treasure or a robot uh, machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multiplayers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so get off the bench and go download it for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So we are heading into the off season, and just in all transparency, this show is not going anywhere. I know that some capital shows are going to be put in mothballs until the fall. This show will be going five days a week throughout the summer. I think there's maybe three or four weeks in the dog days of summer where it gets knocked down to three shows. But by and large, you will have a lot of Capitals coverage all summer and uh we're going to talk about what is next but you know just kind of getting into the post-mortem uh, of this season and this game and what is next something is glaringly obvious to me it didn't work this season did not work and you know you take a look at it brian mcclellan he saw it wasn't working. Uh, you saw Anthony Mantha get dealt. You saw Joel Edmondson. You saw Kuznetsov get moved out of here. All wise moves. I don't really argue with any of the moves. Mantha was going to be a, a free agent. Uh, you take a look at Edmondson. Uh, again, I don't think he was going to be coming back. And we all know what the situation was with Kuznetsov. So I agree with those moves. So what is next for this team? That is where it gets a little bit more difficult, especially for this particular fan base. Capitals fans love this lineup. They love Oshie. They love Carlson. They love Ovechkin. They love Wilson. 
and they love a lot of the young players. But something that was glaringly apparent um, tonight is the Capitals made it uh, to the playoffs, or in this series, shall we say, they made it to the playoffs, but were eliminated in a hurry. So if you think that, you know, kind of putting this same group of players on the ice in the fall is going to get you any better results, uh, I, I, I admire your optimism, but I don't think that that is the case. I do think that the Capitals need to make some rather earth-shaking moves similar to what the Washington Nationals did, you know, just a few years ago here. Time flies. You know, the Max Scherzer deal, the Juan Soto thing, something that seemed difficult at the time, but that is what the Capitals are facing right now. We cannot continue to hope that, you know, oh, she's going to, you know, keep, you know, playing better as time goes along. We can't hope that maybe something crazy will happen and Nick Baxter will be back. We, can, we can't. It, it, it's just, it, it's over. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone and you try to do things different and this and that and the other thing it's over it's it's just over and i'm not saying that they should tear it down to the studs exclusively i still kind of want to stick to in my estimation who the untouchables are those that is alex ovechkin even though you know a lot of questions about him uh tom wilson and john carlson and pretty much everyone else on the team i would be willing to listen to offers on now i'm not going to say give them away i did talk about some young talent but if we can somehow some way make this team better to compete with the likes of the rangers the hurricanes uh you know you take a look at the golden knights the the stars the panthers those teams uh that made it to the playoffs and it, i mean i know understand that there are other teams that are going to get eliminated in the first round but most of those teams that struggled uh, here, they at least won a game. The Capitals did not find a way to win a singular game in this playoffs. That is a stink that is going to take more than Vaseline under your nose to eliminate. Um, I know that, you know, they made it to the playoffs and that's a victory. And Jeff Merrick talked about it. But one of the things that Spencer Carberry said is that is a loser's mentality. And I agree with him. And that was a kind of a hard take for him to take. But I agree with it. If you start accepting mediocrity or you start accepting like, hey, I did my best and that should be enough, then, hey, this is professional sports. We're not talking about, you know, something that you're dabbling in. This is professional hockey at its highest level. And to just say, hey, they made it to the playoffs. That's pretty good. Uh, OK, in part. But that is not what's going to get you over the top. I would be willing to imagine that most people that listen to this show or watch it are fans and they want this team to do well and search your heart of hearts. Do you think that this team as is, is going to be any better next fall? And I know the knee jerk thing, and I've talked about it quite often on the show is that Brian McClellan said he was going to go and get that top six forward. Okay. That's just one part of the equation. Uh, you take a, let's talk about the Rangers. You talk about the players, Pan uh, Panarin, Kreider, uh, you talk about, you know, all the different players that are on that team that have scored goals on a regular basis. Basis. If you take a look at the series, it wasn't one player in particular. That was a dynamic team uh, in particular. You take a look at Trocek out there. You take a look at, like I said, Kreider. You take a look at Zibanejad, Panarin. Um, and it wasn't that, you know, there was players that, you know, aren't household names on the Rangers that really stood up. Uh, that is what the Capitals need. So to just say that it is that top six forward and that is going to be enough. That's very short sighted. I've heard that from some Capitals fans. I think that the blue line needs to be addressed. I think that, you know, it's not an ideal situation for John Carlson to have to play almost 30 minutes every game. That is not a recipe for success. And some people will say, well, it's all the injuries. He did that for a good chunk of the season, 20 to 30 minutes a game, just based on the other guys weren't pulling their own weight. So a lot of questions. Uh, again, we can kind of fan out on this a little bit more in the offseason, but those are the big questions. As Capitals fans, I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter. You can hit me up on subtext or YouTube. What players stay what players go, and I'll talk about my thoughts and your thoughts in an upcoming episode, but uh, uh, obviously to me, there is a lot of changes that need to be made. Um, and I want you know to give honest answers. I don't want people to say, well, I think they should trade everyone on the team unless that's you know what you mean. I assume that people don't think that, but I think that there is big changes that need to be made from the top to the bottom. I don't think that Spencer Carberry should be worried too much about his job. I think that he did the best 
best job that he could given the circumstance. Like I talked about in a previous show, he did the best that he could, but you know, a lot of his tools were missing from his toolbox. The Capitals are a truck with poor suspension and they hit a bumpy road and a bunch of the tools fell out and he was dealing with a bunch of flat headed screwdrivers when he needed that drill, that saw, that impact. He didn't have any of that. Um, so that is the position that the Capitals were in. So the onus of the failure of this season doesn't go squarely on his shoulders. I think it's uh, players that need to be improved. Um, I know that, you know, um, Brian McClellan took on a greater role for the Capitals. Um, but, you know, for me, I, I take a look at what the Vegas Golden Knights did at the trade deadline. And I was a bit jealous. I was a bit envious of like, there is a GM that's that's taking charge and he he's doing what he can do not a team that is sticking to the mantra of you know we don't want to make the, you know any big changes on this team because Alex Ovechkin wants to play on a competitive team at the end of the day I don't really care anymore if that's what he wants I want the bigger picture uh, of course I want Ovechkin to catch Gretzky I'm not trying to say I don't care at all about what Ovechkin's saying, but we can't keep sticking to the motto of we can't rebuild this team because Alex Ovechkin said he doesn't want to, want to uh, uh, unless you're just happy with settling for how this team is going to be until he hangs up the skates. Big questions need to take place. Uh, in short, I do think that the Capitals need at least three forwards, you know, upper echelon forwards. And however they have to acquire that, either that is by, um, you know, trading players, trading assets, trading draft picks, whatever the piece that is. I think there are about three upper echelon forwards away from being competitive. Again, apples for apples comparison. Take a look at the Rangers. Is it just one guy? Is it just two guys? No, there are a lot of guys on the Rangers, a lot of players that can score on the regular. That's what you have to have. And taking a look at the blue line, I would pick up two or three blue liners as well. Um, and I understand what it means. You know, we know that Leonard is not going to be joining the team in the fall. And Leonard himself cannot be the one to save this team in and of himself. Alex Ovechkin is going to be yet another year older. Tom Wilson, all these players are getting older that we need to do what the rest of the league is doing. It wasn't just the Capitals getting outworked. They looked slow in this series slow the rangers were skating circles around the capitals and uh that is all these things to think about but that is what my assessment on it here just kind of a knee-jerk reaction is the capitals are about three you know uh top forwards away from being competitive to just keep par with that uh and i would say two or three blue liners away from being competitive as well again uh, it's not really debatable uh and you got to put aside your feelings about fondness you know 2018 you know that is looking further and further back in the rearview mirror i want to put my eyes forward about what's next and you know we saw uh, okay so say we we do have here briefly i'll talk about it say it's you know people say it's the youth we got to push along the youth so uh, we saw what connor mcmichael we saw what hendrick slop here you know beck malenstein are, were those players enough to help this team enough they weren't so we know that it's more than just young players we also need veterans um forwards as well they don't need to be you know 40 years old but we need them younger and we need guys that are quicker and and more skilled uh, i guess i don't know how to put it any simpler than that that big changes is what lies ahead for the capitals listen i want to thank you for joining me on this edition of locked on capitals your only daily year-round podcast covering the washington capitals and i want to thank all of you that that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube, you are ultimately what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel available on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.